is just I am going to take this Java application as a sample. I am just going to demonstrate the CA and CD completely to you with the different options of Jenkins. Okay. So right now I am just going to use the Git source code management. So Git, I am going to make this one and uh, say GitHub. Yes, so I have connected this to my GitHub. And in the build, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to execute a Windows bash command. Not a Windows bash command. It is going to be not a Windows bash command. It is going to be a Linux command, right? Because execute. Because where I have my Linux. So, I sorry, where I have my Jenkins. I have my Jenkins in this place. Okay. So, what you have to do is you don't have to do anything now. So, just we will just apply and save. So, what we are going to do is just we are going to run this build. So what this build will do? Just it will check out the check out the code from the GitHub. Okay. So it is going to check out the code from the GitHub, which is going to be the Java application. So we have checked it out. So now it is checking out. We will see. You see, it is getting checked out. So it is trying to connect to my GitHub, and it is so now the build is success. What the build does? So will build has just to check out my code from the Git. So let's see whether it got checked out correctly or not. So we will just go to the Jenkins machine, which is my uh, Ubuntu machine. So I just going to connect to my Ubuntu machine from my GitHub. Sorry, from my AWS. So I'm just going to connect it. You see? So just I'm trying to connect it. This EC2 is called as a public cloud. Okay, because public anybody can access your machine. So this is called as a public cloud. So now you can see where the Jenkins workspace will be there, where lib Jenkins workspace. So you have something in the workspace. So what will be there in the workspace? So now freestyle Maven project. So in this freestyle Maven project, what will be there? So your pom.xml will be there. Okay. So now what you need to do? You have to execute a command called mvn install in this, right? So I need to just do a command called mvn install. So once I do this MVN install here, okay, the build will start. So this is manual process. So now what happened? The build is running here in this place. And the build is failure. Failed. I don't know why it is. So there is some issue. So it got failed. So maybe what we will do is we will just do an MVN compile. Or first of all, validate. We will see. Validate. Okay, the validate is getting succeeded. I don't know why it is getting failed. Then. So we compile. C O N P I I S. In compile, because I, you know I have installed Maven, so the MPN compile is getting failed. I don't know what is the reason. There is an issue with the plugin. So maybe if I am working with the same thing, if I am using the Maven uh, form.xml, it is working, but uh, this is getting failed, right? If I am using a Maven project, it is getting fast. But the problem here is if I am using the least project, it is getting failed. You see the issue here. So issues. You have a freestyle project here. Same thing, demo CA is the project. What is the configuration? So the configuration here is nothing but so same GitHub, this thing is getting checked out. I'm using the same option which is just install. I N S T E A L install. So which is getting passed, you see. If I am running with this one, it is getting failed. So this is what we have to think about it. Why? So in this freestyle project, so inside this freestyle project, I am just going to run MVN. So MVN version. So I am just going to type the MVN version, which is going to be okay. There is no issue, so it is okay working. So now MVN install so install if I'm putting MVN install command it has to test compile validate everything it has to run so there is a compiler issue the plugin is not good I don't know why it is showing this 
but uh, if I'm using this one same same code, but I'm just using this build Maven project itself, it is working. So it is changed. So now you see, we will see the build is failed or passed now. So now you can see the same thing, but you see it is it will be passed. You see. Same thing when we are using, you see, it is passed now. So this is a difference here. Now the target folder will be created. In the same space, instead of freestyle, you can just go to demo CI. Demo CI. You can see that the target folder was created correctly. Same code when we are checking out with that one it is not working but when we are checking out this one it is working. So this is a difference between always try to go with the Maven project. This is what I am telling you. Correct? You, you understand what I am trying to say here guys? So we have selected, we did the same thing. So what we are trying to do here is first of all in the same project which is in the same project. Okay, So I, just not, I will not change this. So, so same thing I am trying to do the same, same project. Okay, two different jobs are there. I am just taking the name of two different jobs. So one I am doing is the first job. What I am doing is I am doing the same job. So from the same repository, same repository checkout, and doing the build. Okay. Doing the build as a Maven project, I have selected that as a Maven project. So initially, this job is selected. The type of the job is going to be a Maven job. Your voice is breaking, soon. No, it should. It's not clear. Okay. Now, is it clear now? Yes, sir. What? Okay. So I am using a Maven job, so it is working fine here. But if I am selecting a freestyle job, so same thing, S-T-Y-L-E, freestyle job, I am doing this, I am just taking a check of the code. So that's what it says. So they are really breaking the voice. Oh, not clear? Not oh, clear. Is. Okay, but my speed, let me check my speed, internet speed. Is it okay now? So why is this uh, clean or uh, still it is breaking? Oh no, okay, it's so not think. No, okay. okay. So tell me if it is breaking something like that. Just tell me, okay. Pranita. Yes, sir. Tell me if it is breaking, okay. Yeah, yeah, Sundar. Can you speak loud, Sundar? Your voice is so low now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to shout, actually. <laughs> I'm really shouting, you know. <laughs> okay, I will, I will do that. So, actually, I need to, I think, purchase a new speaker or a headphone. I don't know. I need to go for a Bosch then. Bosch, so it is not about the speakers. I think it is a problem with the GoTo meeting actually. Okay. okay. Since okay. it is a free software, we we cannot ask them or write a support ticket with them. <laughs> okay, fine. So see, see, same thing. What I have did here is the same demo CI, the but the way the type which I have mentioned here is the Maven project. 
and here I am just telling the same Maven project but the style which I have used is a freestyle project. Now what I am going to do is since I have checked it out, okay, so after checkout what I am going to do here is I am just going to do a Maven command. So I am just going to run a Maven command in this place. So where I am going to run the Maven command is nothing but in this execute shell, okay, you can just execute any command. Okay, or you can execute the shell script on a remote or shell command. Yeah, so just a command I'm going to execute. MVN, okay, MVN, mm, clean install. Okay, so this is the one which I have given in this place also. You can see. So here also I have mentioned the same thing we are doing as a Maven project, but we are doing this as a freestyle job here. So this is just a difference. So you see the demo CI is also doing the same work and the freestyle project is also doing the same work if you see here. Correct. Do you agree with me? Whatever I have did it the demo CI which is there after the git and the, this part so install goal I am just given the extra goal called clean that's fine so I will delete this clean. Okay so same thing. Here uh, it is default the pom.xml will be taken. Here it will not, here mvn install means it will default take the pom.xml. So I am just saving and apply. Let's see whether this is successfully running or not. Sometimes it may not run. So that is the only reason we need to be very careful while we are choosing our projects. You see? Oh my god, the build is success. I don't know. So when I am doing this manually, it was it was failed, you see. In the same place inside the workplace, when I am doing that, it was failed. So it depends on uh, it depends on the uh, some uh, scenario. So it may fail or it may not fail. Okay. So here we are lucky; it is not failed. But what we have to do, we have to use the correct project. Okay. So this is the first point that today I want to just insist on that. Okay. The second point is till now we are talking about the workspace, right? What is this workspace? The workspace what? Can you, can anyone tell me what is workspace? Can anyone tell me what is workspace? Where all the projects will be saved, Sundar, that we execute in Maven. Maven projects will be saved in the workspace. So it is, okay. I'm going to put it Office left up. Can I have a sat-in port? Can I have a sat-in port? Don't close the door, I say, Abhinav. Okay, so here, so what is happening here is, this is a workspace, right? But the problem here is, fine, so I, I, I need to do some other work. So what is the CI does? So after this one, so after this is completed, so after this job is getting completed, what we need to do is, the output of this job is going to be a var file or a binary. So here it is going to be the grants.var okay the grants.var is going to be here here also it is going to be the grants.var so in the company okay it is the real setup we are doing it okay so in the company what they will be doing here is so they will be using a sub module called artifactory or nexus some dependency management tool okay this grants.var will be put in the tool called artifactory okay just RT factory, okay. A R A R T factory, okay. So RT factory. So in this tool, so what you need to do is you need to make this make this tool available, and you need to make this uh, brands that war into this place. And after that, you have to start the CA job. So this is how the pro, pro the things will be. So in the real time. So when you need to do the CA CD job, so CD job will be taken the thing so you you will be taking your jar okay or var or any binary from this artifactory tool or it can be also the nexus okay so these are all the two different tools you can you can store your binaries in the world okay do you agree with me you have completed your binaries and you have created your binaries and where you will store your binaries so you need to have some place to do that place so that place is called as artifactory so it is called as a J4 Jarty factory. So after the CI, the output of the CI will go to the J4 Jarty factory. So you can see there is a tool called J4 RT factory. 
Okay, so slowly I will come to the Tomcat part and all. So Vikram was asking, right? So how you can solve this uh, issue if I am facing Sundar? So slowly I will, I will, I will remove all the knots and the, you will be clear in two or one or two days. Okay, so don't worry. So just listen what I am saying. So Artifactory is a tool. Okay, so this tool needs to be incorporated in your company. So you need to download this tool. Okay, first of all download the zip. Okay, after downloading the zip, what you, you see, I have downloaded the JForge Artifactory zip. And once you have downloaded it, that's fine. What you need to do is you just go and create one server. And what I have did is I have I have put the zip inside this server. So, you see, if I am still trying to connect it here, so this is my leave it. So this is the workspace and this is the one. If I am trying to connect it to this machine, so I ha I will be having my artifactory over there. You see, the artifactory zip is there, and I have unzipped it. Okay, I have unzipped it, unzipped this J4 the artifactory. It will it, it will be already. Uh, it's asking already. It is there. So I'm just putting S to replace. Yes. So it will be replaced. Okay. So everything it is asking, everything it will be asked. So I have to say for all, maybe I will put, put all. So all will be just inflated, you see. So you will be having this artifactory like this. So once you go inside this artifactory, there will be a bin directory. And from this bin, what you need to do is you need to execute this shell script. And your artifactory will be up and running. You see, your artifactory will be up and running. So you put this one, this command, sh and uh, this one, so that your artifactory will be up and running. Okay. So you may ask me, okay boss, so you asked me to download it, I have downloaded it. And how I will put the zip file into this AWS machine? How can I do that? So you have already an answer and you should be having an answer called SCP command, which I have teached you right before in the Linux part. So what you have to do, you have to use this SCP command. SCP command. And what you have to do, you have to put the source file. So what is our source file? The source file is nothing but artifactory zip to user at the red server. Correct. And the path, path of the server. So it, it should be in the home path. Home Ubuntu. So this is the one you have to give, the SCP command and you have to trigger. So what you need to do, so you need to input the PUM key because you don't know right the AWS key dot So this should be your this should be your command to make this artifactory to go inside this place. To what for that what you can use even you can use the git bash. Maybe I will tell you how to do that. Okay. So let's clear the screen and I will watch the show. So there is something called artifactory. Do you agree with me? So I have downloaded it, right? J4 it is something. Yeah, J4 the artifactory, so file. So there is a zip, right? So it is zip. I need to copy this one. So which is there in my downloads. Where should I copy? I need to copy to the artifactory folder, right? So this is my artifactory machine. So what I need to do, I need to put this username at the right server name, right? I need to put this. So I'm just putting my username and server name. But one more thing, I need to give the password, right? So password to enter to this. So I don't have the SSH with this machine. So if you have already the SSH from your machine to this machine, the auto SSH, you don't have to give the password. Understand? So two mechanism you can do that. So either you can give your PUM key to enter, or otherwise you can also do the AWS, sorry, uh, the key exchange between your server and this that server. But that is the auto SSH which I have told you, right? So that also you can done. You can be done. You can do that. So now you can just say enter, and oh, nothing is working. So SCP, is it working? Yes. So SCP, I can I. It should work, right?
we'll see first of all is this the artifactory server yes so connect to this artifactory server yes Normally, in my opinion, this should work. And this is the way that even I have copied this one. Even this is a way that I have used this for the copy. Maybe I need to remove this. Uh, I think I have to remove this quotes. Maybe yeah. you see, it is even it is telling this is a hyphen i and the identify file. The identify file is which is correct, which I have given us. Let's see. Ah, I am making a stupid mistake here. You have to put this, the syntax is wrong. Yeah, now it should work. You see? Nah, now it is copying. So this is a way that from your local, you are going to copy this, this uh, zip file into your AWS machine. So it is getting copied, you see? So now the zip is getting copied. So it will be copied soon. And I have already did that copying mechanism. So with that only I have just done this artifactory. So this is I, I showed you how to start this artifactory by going inside the bin directory of the artifactory. And once this artifactory is successfully started, you can just go into the artifactory by using this URL. So what you can do is you just put this URL. So you put this URL and put 8081. So this is a default port that you have to remember from the artifactory should up and running, should be up and running. So this is a place where the tool called artifactory which will be up and running for you. And what you are going to do is you are going to use this artifactory tool to store your, what you, you need to store your um, war file. Okay, so the admin and the password is a default login for your artifact admin and just password P A S S W O R T password that's it so not more than that so once you have opened your artifactory you can create your repository in the artifactory so you create a repository so which i have created is a ca demo which i have already created it so i'm just deleting this artifactory no issue so what i'm doing here is i'm just creating a new repository for you new and I'm just going to say generic repository. It's going to be a generic uh, repository. So demo, 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 demo. Who is that? Uh, this guy? Uh, maybe Shiva. Okay. So demo Shiva, something like that. So I have just made it. So I have created it. Okay. So once this is created, that's fine. So you have to whatever I said, you have to link this. One, so you have to link this uh, artifactory to your Jenkins, right? So to do this, first of all, you need to check your Maven plugin. So the plugin is installed or not. So the artifactory plugin will be installed here. So you can check whether it is available or not. Artifactory, yeah, you see the artifact P O R Y, P O R Y, artifactory. So it is not available. So maybe what you can do is you can just check the install. So it should be in the installed otherwise. Yeah, artifactory plugin. You see the artifactory plugin which I have already installed it. So once this artifactory is installed automatically then what do you need to do? You have to integrate this artifactory to your Jenkins. So you have to put go to your configure systems then. So how to integrate this artifactory to your Jenkins is go to the configuration systems. So once you go into the configure system, so what you can do is you can just see the generic artifactory. You see, this is artifactory server that you have to, so it will be like this artifactory servers. You need to add it. So the just to put artifactory, okay, and the URL is going to be this one. 
So no, this is not the URL. So we need to clearly mention the Artifactory URL. So this is my Artifactory URL now. So I need to connect it. So I am just connecting it now. I am connecting it now. And username and password you have to give it. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D password. Now test the connection. It will be saying, yeah, I found this Artifactory 5.1. So now the Artifactory got connected. Now what we need to do? So we have created the CA job here. So the grants.var is the output of our CA job. So this grants.var should be copied from this place to this place, Artifactory. How to do that? So this is the one that we have to do it. So we need to create a job called Artifactory. What we will do is we will just delete the job which if I have it already. So now this freestyle Maven job, I am just going to create a one more job called Artifactory, Artifactory CI. It's going to be again a freestyle job, and I am going to I am going to do something in this one. Okay, I am going to use the Artifactory. I am just going to link something into this Artifactory. So you see. The Gradle, not Gradle, it is just a genetic artifactory integration, you see. So this part, in the build part, build the environment part. In the build environment part, if you are going for the build environment part, lot of options will be there. One of the options is going to be a generic artifactory integration. So you just click it and you can either use this pattern or any pattern, but a legacy pattern is always, it is getting chosen and refresh the repository, you can see whatever repository I have created it. So Demo Shiva is a repository and you have to publish the artifacts here. But if you want to publish the artifacts, always it will be taking from your home directory. So what is the home directory is nothing but the workspace, right? The workspace. But but the problem here is where, where you want to take the artifacts, the artifact is in the Demo CA, this project. The artifacts are there in this project. But I want to take some repository, you are saying that you are going to work in this repository project, that is Artifactory job, but you need to take the content, the input content for this second job from the first job. So what for this kind of issues, there is a technique which is followed in the uh, Jenkins called custom workspace. So what you are going to do is I am just going to use some custom workspace. I don't want the common workspace. Sorry, I don't want the specific work, workspace. I want to use some common workspace. So what is this common workspace is nothing but you can use the custom workspace. What is the directory that I can use it? So the custom workspace is empty, right? So you can just have some directory name which can be a where lib Jenkins so this is the place, right? So I am just taking it. So where lib Jenkins, okay? And I uh, am just going to use this workspace itself and say that it's going to be something custom workspace, something like that. So C U S T O M custom workspace for C A. Okay, so this is what I am just going to use it and it is going to be CA, something like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to apply and save, and if I run this build now, okay, what will happen here is, if the things will not be checked out in this workspace, or always it will be going into my custom workspace now. You see, the build will be happening in my custom workspace. Now you can just have, have a look, okay, so whether we have created the custom workspace here or not. You see, there is the custom workspace it got created. So in this custom workspace, we have a target folder now, and inside the target folder, we will be having the grants.war. We'll be having the grants.war. So you can ask me why this is having. So it is just, uh, I have checked it out. So I have my grants.war directly in my GitHub. So that's the reason it is checking out. But because of the Maven, when it is created, means it should be there inside my target folder. It is there. So now, since I have my custom repository here, custom workspace here, so use the same custom workspace there also. So now what we need to do, first we need to link the CI project and the Artifactory project. So 
So how to link? That concept I have already told you that is called as a downstream project. So for this, this is going to be the upstream project and I am going to select that project as a downstream. So how to select that as a downstream is nothing but add post build activity. Okay, in that post build activity after the build is completed, I need to add some other project, right? So that is that concept is called as a downstream. So once this build is completed, I need to trigger some other thing. That is going to be the downstream. So build other projects. So what project I need to build? I need to build this artifactory project. Okay, so this now we will be saved it as a downstream. You see artifactory CA is a downstream. Now if I go here, I need to again configure this custom workspace because the workspace which I am going to use is a shared workspace. So if I am going to use the same workspace as a, so I need to use the workspace as the same workspace which I have used it for what? The project one. So what is the workspace I have used it? So this is the workspace that I have used it, right? So I need to use the same workspace here. So I need to use the same workspace here and it is going to be the uh, demo CI, something like that. The display name, so, something like that. Or I don't know, let's see, that's okay, fine. So here I am going to use the same workspace. So what is happening? Now in this architecture, so the project one, the CA job and the artifactory job is going to use the same workspace. Okay, the workspace for this job is going to be same. Okay. Workspace for this job is going to be same and it is going, that, that point is called as a custom workspace. So custom workspace will be working only in the freestyle job. In other job it will not work. So remember this. When you are using a Maven project, you cannot use the custom workspace. Okay, so that's the reason I have selected the freestyle job. Now what we need to do is we don't do anything just to go into this project and say what is the artifact you have to publish, which is going to be star star war. So anything which is with the var, you have to just publish the artifacts into your artifact. So this is what the operation that you are saying. Okay, now what we are doing is just we are going to trigger the command. So in the meantime, I can just create a build, the pipeline I have already told you, right? In this pipeline, I am just going to configure a small change. So in this one, I am just going to use this select initial job as the... Uh, where is the freestyle job is not there? We oh yeah, have a freestyle job is not at all there. Demo CA grants Maven with a no. No, this is not a job. CA, I don't know. Okay, leave it. So I'm just going to the Jenkins part and I'm just going to create a special pipeline. So the pipeline is going to be a demo artifactory pipeline. Pipeline. So I am just creating the thing. So what is the initial job is going to be? Yeah, there is some other name which is there. So that's the reason it is not coming. Let me check. Go and check. What is the name which I have given for the initial job is? Yeah, custom workspace. Okay, okay. So this is what I have given to her. So it's using directly the custom workspace as the initial job. You see, that's a problem. No. Yes. Let's change the name. That's a problem, maybe. <coughs> so the last success, what is that? So CI, okay. Okay, this is what the project name is. Okay, I have changed the project name, so this is a problem. So this is the one which. So this the project name is this one, but when I am using this in CI, so I need to use. You see, the display name is going to be CI. So what you what I need to do is I need to put the same name here, so it would be helpful for us. Identify that.
Okay, now we can just edit it in our freestyle job. So which is going to be a normal CA only, but that's fine. So now I have changed the job, right? So we'll just do some refresh and now it will be showing us, yeah, freestyle project initial. So now I am just going to, I have created the pipeline model for this. And the demo, this is the freestyle Maven job, which I am going to just run it now. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, so I'm just going to run this one here. So let's see, I have enabled it, auto refresh. So now this job is running and after that, this job will be, ah, why it is calling demo CA? It should be calling artifactory, right? I don't know why it is calling demo CA. So for this freestyle Maven job, let me go check the name which have mismatched. That's a problem. So, freestyle job. So, it will be calling me the artifactory job. You see. So, once this is completed, it is calling, it is triggering the build of demo CA. What is this? Okay. Demo CA is nothing but our artifactory only. That's fine. So that's fine. Just uh, the name of the job is uh, mismatching here, but uh, maybe we will just put the same name as an artifactory itself, so that it will be easy for us to identify it. Right. So you see, the name of the job is going to be artifactory. Yeah, R T F A C T O R Y. Artifactory upload. So it's getting uploaded. Uh, T A is getting uploaded here. You can now check that. Uh, in the preview, which is a pipeline, so you we can see the both job is completed. You see the freestyle job and the artifactory upload. Now you can just the whole company can go just refresh the Siva. So we will just go to this artifact, and you can just see the Siva. You see the grants that war is there. So now the CI is completed now. So what we have did, we have did this. Uh, CI which is uh, com automatically whenever the developer is getting changed so the development environment is getting changed the build will be done and the, once the build is completed it goes and checks out uh, checks in to the artifactory which is a dependency management system of the company from now what we are going to do is we are going to take this dependency management system and we are going to do a deployment for that what we are going to do we are going to do the CD job right up to this is it right? So for this CD job, I have told you the concept called master and slave. So again, what we are going to do, we are going to use this one and take the things out and going to do the master slave concept there. Okay. Now we will see. So what we have to do now, the next point is we need to go for the slave. So what is the slave? Where we need to download, where we need to deploy this job. So this is going to be the deployment node. So this deployment node should be connected as a slave. Correct. We have to connect this node as a slave. So what we need to do here, so we need to do a connect. So okay. So I have already told you the master slave concept, right? How to set up this slave node. So let's go and check the new node connection, whether it is there or not. So you see the deployment slave is there. I have made the connection on that day. Since Whenever I stop and start the things, the instant host name will be changed. So that's the problem. It is not working. So I'm just going to change the configuration and the node name, the host name is going to be changed. So I'm just changing the host name. Okay. So after that, I'm just saving it. Now I'm just trying to relaunch the agent and it should be connected. Let's see. It's trying to connect and the node will be up and running. You see the node is successfully up and running. So what we need to do, so we need to we need to have this deployment slave. So yesterday on the day what we did, so this deployment is having this deployment slave should be having the Tomcat and all the required things and this var should be copied over there, right? So now what we are going to do here is we are going to in the Jenkins, the next job is going to be created with the master slave concept. So the next job is I'm going to create as a new job, which is going to have as a demo, which is demo deployment deployment tomcat with the java application apps okay you see let's see the deployment tomcat java apps deployment so i'm just going to do a deployment 
So this is a freestyle project. But in this project, what is the thing? So am I going to run in this machine, in this node, which is going to be the Jenkins node? I'm not going to run the things, the deployment in the Jenkins node. I have created the jar here. I have transferred the jar into the artifactory machine. From this artifactory, I'm just going to do, do the deployment in this machine now. So this is the cycle of my CI and CD. So now what is going to happen is, so this is going to be the artifactory server. Artifactory server. So this is going to be your Jenkins server. So this is going to be your deployment server. So we are going to play between these three environment. Okay, deployment server. So and all are connected by the pipeline or all are automated through the process of upstream and downstream. Right. So this is a concept, upstream and the downstream, right? Upstream, st, stream slash downstream. And this is called as a pipeline jobs. This is called as a pipeline jobs. So we put the initial jobs called uh, Maven job and after that it is happening. Correct. And this is also this pipeline or the CD in this pipeline is achieved by master slave concept. S-L-A-V-E. Master slave concept of Jenkins. And how the resources are getting shared by using the custom workspace. So the workspace concept, it is a technical, pure technical concept, but we are trying to see that manually and uh, real time with some real time examples that we are going to slowly demonstrate. And these two things are getting transferred by using the plugin, which is Artifactory plugin. So what I have did, I have created the, checked out the things from the GitHub and did the build by using Maven and uh, created the var and that var is getting uploaded to the Artifactory server. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to download this var into this, I am going to copy this var into this deployment server automatically and I am also going to, in this deployment server, I am going to install the Tomcat, I am going to install the, uh, whatever the things it want, the config file, I would say it is a config file which talks about the access management, okay, and finally I am just going to put this jar var file, okay, var file into the folder. So what is the deployment folder of the Tomcat is nothing but the web apps. So this is the default thing you have to know about it. So these three things is going to be done and the CD and CA should be completed in this cycle. Okay, so this is what my goal is. Now I am going to explain that to you. So for that we are in the process of CD deployment. I have created the master and server. Uh, slave concept and I am just going to run some commands in the slave. Whatever I have told you, I am going to run the things in the slave. For that, restrict the build where it can run in the... So what is the name of the slave? I forget it. So deployment slave. So deployment, yeah, deployment slave. I am going to run everything on the deployment slave. And what I'm going to run is nothing but some commands. So add build step. I'm just going to execute some shell commands. So first of all, sudo apt install tomcat8 just like that. So sudo apt install tomcat8 user module. Again, I'm going to install the sudo apt install tomcat whatever it is admin so whatever you want to install you have to tell this to them and what you need to also do is you need to copy or SCP okay so what you need to do is it is nothing but SCP so what you need to do SCP so it should be there in the workspace right so again you need to use something okay you don't have to do this so just do this one that's enough Okay, we will see in between later. Something I will, I'll be telling that later. So there is a one more concept I can explain you uh, with the real time example. There is something called SSH plugin in the Jenkins. So I will explain that SSH plugin now in with the real time with this example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now if I run this build, so the whatever the Tomcat, this software will be installed on my computer now. It is throwing an error. Let's see what is happening. So you see, so 
So Tomcat, uh, it is not Tomcat admin. It is going to be Tomcat 8 admin, right? I made a spelling mistake over there. So what we have to do, it is going to be, there is no first package. So that's the reason it is the build is getting failed. So it should be Tomcat 8, okay? Fine, boss. So I have did this and saved it. So now what we have to do is if we are doing the build now, so what will happen is the Tomcat is going to be up and running on that machine. For sure the Tomcat is going to up and running on that machine. So the build is success. And you can just to see in the deployment machine, so whether the Tomcat is up and running or not, you can just try to connect it by using 8080 port. So 8080 port is a default port of our Tomcat. So just you can see this. So 8080 port is a default port of our Tomcat. You see the Tomcat is up and running. Okay. So you can just also check. So it can be an admin and the password can be P-A-S-S-W-O-R-T password. You see it is working. So now basically I have installed the grants application. This grants application manually over there. So if I click it in this server, so it will be running. But this is a manual activity. I, I am not interested on this manual activity. Okay. So I have did already on this server. So that's the reason it is working. But what I want to do is I need to put this var always in this server, right? So for that, you have to transform. So you have to transfer the jar, sorry, transfer the var from one place to other place. Correct. So to transfer something, there is something, the concept in the Jenkins is called SSH plugin. Okay, secure, okay, SSH copy over SSH plugin. So you can copy a file over the SSH protocol. For that, again, you need to go for the managed plugin. So you have to see or install, inst let's check in the install SSH plugin. So publish over SSH plugin. You are going to publish your file over the SSH plugin. Okay, so this plugin is already there. So if this plugin is already there, what we need to do next? So next is going to, we are going to integrate it. So you are going to integrate that. So how you are going to integrate? Go to your integration system and set your SSH server for you. So in server you are going to do this copy. So you can just tell, you see I have told this server. So what is our deployment server? You have to tell your deployment server, right? So that you, I need to copy this to my deployment server. So just give the URL of your deployment server, which is going to be the host name of your deployment server. Okay, just do this. And uh, what is this is going to be waiting. So yeah, so just give the host name of the deployment server and the username and the remote directory. Which directory it, it need to be copied? Which directory it needs to be copied? So that one you are you need to give it to them. So right now it is going to be the home directory. But uh, it is not a home directory. You have to copy this to some other uh, uh, correct web application. So there is something called web apps folder. I am not sure about the folder. So I am just going to take the path from that uh, one of my chef recipe. So so. So what is that is nothing but web apps, you see, so this one. So I need to copy this, this is going to be your remote directory. So you need to copy the files, whatever the files we are going to copy. I am just going to copy this grants.war into this folder. So if you are installing Tomcat, so automat Tomcat 8, automatically this web apps folder will be there in your machine. So just we will check the connection. You see the connection is working. And how I made this connection, you need to ask without password how you made it. So I have given the key directly here. So my AWS key can be directly given here. By using this password, by using this, use this password authentication different key. So I have just pasted my uh, AWS phone key directly here. Okay, and test the connection, the connection is success. Now I am ready to copy my file into this place. So now what we need to do here is, uh, Ah, did I save it? I think I have not saved it, I guess. So maybe I made a mistake. So I need to again do this. So the server is the name. Server name is 230. And this is server name is, yeah, I made a mistake, you see. So I need to copy this one, complete one. Uh, 
and the path is going to be Okay, so test configuration, yeah, test success, so apply and save. Okay, once I did it and I am going to create a one more job now, which is going to be say named as a copy var to deployment server. Deployment server. Okay, so freestyle project. So in this job, what we need to do, we need to use the, again the custom workspace because everything is going to share the same workspace. Because where is my jar, where is my var is there? It is there in your custom workspace, right? So you are you are forced to give your custom workspace here because all your jobs are going to be shared the same platform. So use this custom workspace and uh, just this is the directory and what is the display name, just try to give the same name otherwise it will be confusing for you. So try to give the same name here. And what we are going to do, so you are going to do the, in the post build action, there will be something called publish over SSH. Send the build artifacts over the SSH. You see, by using this SSH, you are going to do that. So since I have already mentioned the SSH server, if you are having a multiple SSH server, you can mention that. So here the source file is going to be star.war, that's it. This war file needs to be needs to be the source is going to be the war file will be there directly or uh, I think it is in the directory called the target. Okay, There will be a target directory called target T-A-R-G-E-T -E target and after that this is going to be there and remove the prefix is going to be T A R G E T target. So otherwise it goes the target directory will also be copied. It is not required. So only the var need to be copied. That's fine. So now apply and save. Now if I am running this one, so I just want to see, okay, I just want to see whether it is getting copied correctly or not. So now I am just trying to run this build and we will see what is happening. It's running. It's in blue color. So permission denied. There is some permission issue is there. Wait. Let's see. There is some permission issue is there. Connecting with the configuration, disconnecting, exception, publishing, is a change build result to unstable, okay, exception, permission denied, for what it is permission denied, let me check it, so, okay, let me check, for this directory, let me try to give a, okay, it is a Ubuntu and okay, so that is a problem, yeah, 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 I understood, so, that's a problem. So the user, we are trying to, you see here, the problem here is, I have mentioned the user as a Ubuntu here, correct. In my configuration, in my advanced configuration, I have said in this server, so the, the user who is going to access is nothing but the Ubuntu. Okay, but uh, let me, let me just do some tricks so that uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, Without giving any permission change, we can just make the changes. So just a moment. So I'm just going to use that, or otherwise I'm just going to give the 777, which is a full permission to all users. So you see, I'm saying the username is Ubuntu, but the problem here is everything is in the Jenkins user. So always try to do this one. So that's better actually. So user is a Jenkins, and now we will try to execute this now. So now we will just say reload and uh, let me execute it. 
So if I am selecting this verbose, so I will see the output whatever it is happening. So in the screen itself. So I'm just doing to I'm going to do the build again. And let's see. Okay, so session username is Jenkins and the host name. Port exception when publishing. Exception message fail to connect and initiate the SSH connection. Message connect to failed and uh, ah okay without Ubuntu you cannot connect it. Okay, so that is uh, again the next issue. Okay, so this cannot connect because we cannot connect it uh, without Ubuntu. Jenkins user cannot connect it. So it has to be connected by using AWS. If we have 10 WAR files, do we need to do a not required. Put star not war, so automatically 10 war file will be copied. Not required, Pranita. Okay, not required, Pranita. If you want to copy the 10 wars, you put already you have put star dot war. So whatever the 10 any see any artifact tree will be there in the target folder. So if you go inside the target folder and say star dot war, all the war file will be copied. Okay, so that that you can do it in a single single way itself. And if you don't want to do that, and if you want to show more no issue, you can do it in the job. So that's up to you to take a decision. But if you are doing ten jobs, your manager will fire you. U B U N T U Ubuntu. Okay, so now the testing will be fine. So what we can do maybe in this case is I'm give I'm going to give the permission to it. Okay. So the good permission, so the good way of permission to this. So sudo su. So when I'm going as a root, okay, I'm just going to give lib Jenkins. Hmm? So in this workspace, I'm just going to say ch mod. Okay. So ch mod hyphen r 777 to custom workspace. Okay, so now if I see ls hyphen ld, so it will be telling, so everybody is having an all access button. You see again there is an issue. So here, if I am going into the custom workspace and say ls hyphen ld, so here everybody are having an access, so that's fine. So even in my workspace I can do this, no issue. I will give you the workspace access to everyone. That's uh, just it's a demonstration purpose, right? So, sorry. Hello guys, are you there? Can you able to hear me? Sundar, yeah. <coughs> so we can hear you, but uh, okay. Okay. so I am this. Sorry, there are too many navigations, and uh, I think we are going uh, like uh, in different screens uh, within very short span, so we couldn't understand most of the things here. Okay, okay, I will not go. Leave it. So now what I am going to do here is uh, I am just going to execute this one now again. The same thing, I have given the good permission to it. So I am just going to do the build now. And let's see what is happening now. You see, very good. So I think it is getting copied. So the web apps, the connector, it is going to, it is connected to this place. But this is connected to this place and disconnecting exception while you are publishing the permission denied. So it is not giving the permission to me. That is a problem. Then build the over artifacts. So for why it is not giving the permission. So we need to check. But this is a way that you can use it uh, SSH plugin. So you can use the any any file can be transferred from one place to other place by using this plugin. Okay. So let me check in which place I need to have the permission because this is my Jenkins machine, right? So this is my Jenkins machine. 
and I think in the host machine I am not able to access it. So the deployment machine is not giving me a permission. You see what is the deployment machine? I am just putting the things from this machine to this machine, right? So uh, I think in my deployment machine I need to give the permission to this place. So I need to connect to this deployment node now. So I am going to connect to my deployment node. So I am just doing that now. So I am going to check why there is no permission and why it is not giving me a permission to do that. So we have to go to where. What is a place you know we have used uh, where we are trying to connect it to our machine. So what is a place? So we need to see the configuration again, right? So we are going to be, what is our remote? Sundar, why are you copying the files from Jenkins machine? Why we have placed it? What your question is? Sundar, why are we copying the file from Jenkins machine while we have placed it already in RT factory? Yeah, yeah, I will tell you. So this is the first way that you are going to copy the file from your Jenkins machine to manually. I need to ex ex explain you the SSH plugin, right? So there is a two parallel way. You can you can take the files into the deployment machine by RT factory itself. The was you can take it from the deployment machine itself, sorry, artifactory machine itself. And but you, you can, if you don't have artifactory, let's say your company is not using artifactory and they are not en encouraging you to do that, then in that case, how you will transfer your uh, files, Mahendra? By using this publish over SSH. So there is a different ways to do a single job. So that's the reason I am just explaining this point to you. Okay. I am going to explain you how you can directly access this artifactory from this place. So let me okay. So let me try to figure it out this one, and after that I can do it. Okay. So wait. So now I am just going to see which place I okay. Where lib tomcat apps? So this folder is not having. It's not giving an access. This is what it is telling. Okay. So. I have just went to this place and. Uh, I went as a sudo. I'm just going this as a sudo, and I'm going to say so where slash web apps all those things. So fine. So okay, I'm again making a mistake. So what it is telling? So ls hyphen ld. So everything. No, everybody is having an access. So in the meantime, I'm just going to remove this branch that was. Okay, fine. So that is what. So it is having a root. Root is having an access. So that's a problem. So this grants application is having a root access. That's a problem. So what I am going to do is, yeah, others cannot write it. So this is what the problem here is in this web app. So I am just going to say ch mod hyphen r 777 to this web apps folder. Now if I am saying the permission, so it is going to be so the permission is going to be for everyone, everything is accessible. Now we will try to do the build now. Let's see whether this is getting the var file is getting transferred the build is success or not. So now the permission issue should not be there. You see now it is green. So it means that there is no permission issue. And you see one file got transferred. Very good. Applause to Sundar. So what we are doing now if you see here, you see the grants.var is up and running. That's it. So what we need to do now is that's uh, good. So what we need to do here is we need to copy this when this job need to be run. So this job need to be run okay after the upload of the artifactory. So once it is uploaded in the artifactory okay artifactory upload is done 
and the downstream of this project is going to be the next sequential step by step. The action is once it is uploaded into the artifactory, I need to call in the post build action, build other projects and one of the project is going to be copy, right? What is the project name? Copy artifact SSH or copy var yeah, so this is what, copy var to the deployment server. So it is going to be deployed. So it's going to be going to the deployment server. And now what you can do here is, we can see the demo artifactory pipeline now. You see, now first is the Maven CA is done. And after that you are uploading the CA var, jar into, that is var into your artifactory. From there you are also uploading, so copying the var to the deployment machine. And after that you need to start your deployment. So next you need to start your CD. So here with this configuration you need to start your CD. So the, now for this job we are going to do the post build action job which is going to be another project. So which project you have to start here to build? Yeah, it has to be like this. So after this you have to do this. So I'm just fl flipping the thing. So it is going to be deployed. So what is my CD job? So what is my CD job? I am not sure about the CD job name. So what is my CD job here? It is going to be what is my CD job? Tomcat Java. Yeah. So Tomcat Java apps deployment. So Tomcat Java apps deployment. Now you clearly watch me, you clearly watch me, I'm just removing this one. So I'm just removing this Jenkins.var from this place. Okay, so manually I have removed the things from the server. You see, I have removed this from the server. Now I could not able to access my uh, my gen grants, so grants.var, it will be throwing an error if it is there, such things are coming like that. So it's not accessible because I don't have my Jenkins so I, the application is not up and running you see it is not coming now what we will do is now what we will do is we will just this is a pipeline so we have a clear pipeline now CA job artifactory job and from the artifactory before so the Jenkins the charge in a, once this is completed so this will be copying the var file into this deployment server and now the deployment server will be triggered. The deployment will be start. Now what we will do is we will run. So this is the exact demonstration of CI and CD. So in the meantime, you can just check the timestamp of this one. So the timestamp is unable to reach. Why? I don't know why immediately it went down the artifactory. Let's see what is happening. Maybe did I made any mistake in this? Or did I closed my artifactory server? Yeah, there is some issue. So I have closed or something I have I did it. Okay, we'll see. You see artifactory upload is getting failed but that is not a blocker for us. So anyway we are going to do this. So this job will fail that's fine. So if this job is failed it will not be triggering this job. That's a problem but now this job is not dependent. Anyway this job is the, you have a grants and this grants dot application var will be copied to this place. But the problem is if this job is getting failed the other job will not be triggered. So that is what we have did the configuration, right? So what we can do is we can just trigger the other build. We can just change the configuration in such a way that uh, trigger if the build get fails also. Trigger even the build get fails. So it goes to the other one. So now you can just to see run the build. Even this is getting failed, other other job will be triggered for us. So did I start at the bill? Yes. I have started it now, so it is running for us now.
So this is completed and I think this will be started now. No, it is not at all starting. Wait. We'll see. It, it will be refreshed soon. Yeah, it is getting failed, but this is getting green and this will be triggered soon. Once this is completed, we can just check our application which is up and running in that machine. Let's see. You see, everything is green. This is down because of the server issue. So previously I have showed it was working. So, so now we will see. You see, that's good. So the application got deployed. So now what I have as I told you, you can either take this CD job, that is the grand start war into this deployment server by using the artifactory or you can also use this SSH plugin. So copy over SSH plugin also to do that. So there is one more thing called way some people will be using is FTP. They will be using the FTP server to also do this. So there are different ways to do this work. Okay. So one of the way which I have showed you is artifact, sorry, which is SSH. So I have show, I will show the artifactory also to you, maybe soon. Okay, so up to this you practice and tomorrow we will see about how you can do this artifactory. In this artifactory, there is something called kernel command will be there. Okay, so there is some issue. So yeah, there is a down. So the server itself is down, you see. It, it got a reset or something got reset at this point. So now what we have to do here is so we can just go to artifactory bin and sh artifactory you see. Now our artifactory is up and running so it should be up and running. You see. You see artifactory is successfully started. So now if you are just again doing this build again maybe. You see now the artifactory upload will also be working for you. You can check it. You see now it is just the timestamp is 15.9 right. Maybe it is created and last modified. Now it will be refreshed soon and it will it will be green now. This job also will be green. So today is the best class of your DevOps. So you have seen the end to end. Okay, it, again it is getting failed. We will see what is that. So maybe there is some issue. Again there will be a remote workspace CI fail to create the custom. Okay. So failed, okay, the custom workspace, he could not able to take it from the custom workspace, I guess. So that's a problem. We will see. We will sort it out. No issue. But uh, that's fine. Permitting the downstream, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so now today we have seen the complete demonstration of how the project is getting built from the GitHub. So I have, I have used GitHub here and the Maven here. And we have used artifactory inter integration and we have used the SSH uh, transfer from one server to other server and we have used the master slave concept to deploy the things from one server to other server and I have also installed by using the commands, app get commands, I have installed the Tomcat on this machine and I have installed my container which is the var container so the Tomcat is a container so I have installed my var application to that. So, only thing is instead of our var application in the real time it will be substituted by the real time application that's it and the way the configuration file so that will be so here and there you have to use some tricks to uh, put some files and to manage the server before and after the build or before and after the deployment okay so this is how it works in the real time okay guys clear it will not be clear have this video, have this video, just try to see here and there and uh, try to practice this one at least once, okay.
so you have to practice once then only you will be having a clear open make release engineer are doing the same what is this what is this so vanita okay open make release engineer doing the same thing like jenkins what is this open make release engineer make is something which is a like a maven there is one one more build tool so this is a make are, are you talking about that pranita yeah so instead of this maven what you will do is you cannot link the make to this so ant and uh, uh, maven gradle will be there so make is nothing but what you will do is you will you will just execute like the like which i have executed this one so instead of this maven install you will be saying make file that's it so not more than that so everything is the same story same template you have to use the same template like this anyway you will check it out by using git or sp okay or uh, even uh, github so here instead of this mvn command you will be giving just a make command that's it make is a command for that so you will be giving that answer is open make software i don't know this and all okay so to answer you your question i would say s yes for this same concept like this so here they will be giving lot of things i don't know so i have to check and tell, tell you so i will tell you okay see you tomorrow by practicing this please come tomorrow and we will see sundar mahendra here yes mahendra like okay, one thing as you said sundar i guess you know i just uh, even uh, siddharth was pinging me it's a bit like you know mm -hmm. uh, heavy for us in this given point of time so what we'll do is we'll go through the video once again and we'll try to it's not at all heavy i i completely disagree with you mr mahendra okay yeah. it is not at all heavy the problem here is you have no access to my previous class no no, sir, let me, sure no, no, wait, wait, sir. I'll tell you because huh? see, we we are just uh -huh. thinking. The problem is there. Even uh, Vikram was mentioning that you are going through multiple windows. You now we are getting confused when you are moving from window to one window to another window. That's what I am saying. Uh -huh. Yeah, I am not saying that. Uh, <laughs> I am not saying that it is too much heavy for us. But uh, what I am saying is uh, we have to go through the video once again, go frame by frame and look into it so that we'll just try to figure uh -huh. it out whether we are able to get through it or not. Fine, fine. That is what I say. I am also telling you. Yeah. Go through the video, but you just don't believe the video. This is what the the frame that you have to understand. Yeah. No, Sundar. See, uh, like what? Uh -huh. See, my point here is Sundar. Is, uh, there are too many navigations. See, everything like uh, connecting to a server and working on a uh, like a Linux command. We understand everything. Most of the things we, which you told us. But too many mm -hmm. navigations. So until unless we know a full workflow, we can't say that we have uh, we have known this. Correct. So understand this workflow first of all. Then. Yes, sir. Yes, but say for understanding or like uh, to uh, to understand the whole workflow, like CI, CD, and in between the uh, artifactly, probably we we may need to uh, watch this uh, video multiple times. And unfortunately, uh, today's uh, to, I think today the internet was a little. Uh, Uh, low on uh, the connectivity is a little low on your side. Probably that is also one more reason which uh, which made us. Uh, okay. Double, double so what you know, in this case, what, what you can do is, we will not go further classes. Okay. So what we will do is you practice this, and let's go with one class, two class with the same issue solving for this. Okay. so yes. everyone try to do the same setup and come with the issues and uh, we will fix it and sort it out and if you don't understand because for sure you have to understand this for me there is no other go you can don't you don't have to understand the rebase you don't have to understand the git reset and the revert but you have to understand this and uh, then only at least you can talk something in the interview okay Uh, so uh, like uh, is it possible to uh, like uh, have one more session on the same yes yes you can run that is what i don't i don't have a point of one or two sessions so in my number of sessions <laughs> wait so i want everybody to show this to me so with the green one that's it 
Yeah, sorry. Una. Whenever you are telling everything is green on your machine, so that, so from there we will go to the next class. Okay. Up to that we will sit on discuss on the same point. Uh, yes, Sundar. That's what my point was. Okay. Fine. Mahinder, do you want to add, add, add anything? No, no, that's it. I mean, even I wanted to ask this, we will repeat the class, like, you know, until everyone is clear on this. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. No, uh, no Sundar, because Sundar, as you said, I'm I'm that, uh, this is the uh, point where... Mahindra. No, no, Sundar, no, as you said, this is the point where actual uh, DevOps uh, work starts. So, I just wanted to yes. make sure that we are getting every concept well. Because if anything, yes, yes. Uh, if even a single concept is missing, the entire flow will miss. That's uh, that's my uh, major concern. Uh, exactly, exactly. If you don't understand this again, how can I talk about Jeff and Puppet and the Docker? Yes, and we'll do one thing tomorrow. We'll be you, know, you can just ask us questions, sort of thing. Or we if we have any questions, we'll be coming back to you tomorrow session. And then if mm -hmm. by tomorrow, if everyone is okay with this, we'll we'll uh, you know move ahead. Or else again, we'll uh, sit back and again in the next class too. That's what my point is. I mean, okay. Take opinion from everyone. Okay. Who are talking. Yeah, that is what you show me. Just four jobs green in your window, and we will move ahead. Okay. Definitely, definitely, Sundar. Okay, but you have to show me. So even Pranita, Siddharth, and uh, Chetan, everyone. Yeah, definitely. That's what I mean. That that's a I mean like point of <laughs> taking this. Yeah. Point, I mean, like. Yeah. Okay. And everything should be there in the GitHub. Yeah, yeah, Sundar. Sorry, not not GitHub. It is. It should be there in the AWS, not in your local machine. Yeah, okay, in AWS. Yeah. Finally, if you are crying for this, then what you will what you will do for this? So, see this. So this is what our goal end goal for this should be. Okay, so everything should be created in the VPC, and you have to have the IAM integration, uh, in identity and management services, mm -hmm. and you have to use the EC2, and uh, you have to also put this Docker. So finally, you have to put this Docker. You need to have the Git server in your machine. So in your AWS machine, you need to have the Git server. Not I mean to say GitHub. Okay, and you have to access your remote repository through this one. So the grant should be there in this machine. And even Git LFS, so there is something called LFS. So Git LFS should be also be there, and Git uh, GitOlite will also should be also there. This is access management system of Git, so it should be also there, and Git should also be there. So this many things should be there for the Git, and after that you have to set up the Jenkins server. So uh, Red Hat Arch Factory, so Arch Factory server should be there, and uh, Maven server should be there. This is uh, one and. Uh, Finally, even you need to do the sonar also in that. So, so after that, you have to just do the Maven project and the unit test cases. So the J unit and all it is not required for you. And after this, the slave should be the CT should be done with this grants node. And after that, the same thing should be repeated with the chef orchestration and the host structure. So by using this host chef complete one in this uh, one, you have to do this same step with the chef. Whatever you have did, you have to repeat with the puppet. And everything should be there inside the VPC, okay, the virtual pro private cloud. So till now what we are, we are doing is in a public cloud. So you have to do everything in a, a private cloud. And you have to put that for this application machine, okay, if it is going down, one machine is going down, automatically other machine should be started. So for that we need to go for the auto-scaling methodology. And we have to put this application machine in the cluster, so which is in your AWS, that is called as auto-scaling concept. We are going to talk in the AWS. And we are also going to talk about uh, the um, different services of uh, AWS too. So we are going to implement the services for this. And in the meantime, we are going to also put some R&D services and front flow, so cloud front. And we are going to also use some cloud watch, which we are going to monitor all the servers. So what we, what we will do if any server is going down. See, for example, we are working on Artifactory, and the Artifactory server went down, right? So like this, so the monitoring server, so previously it was the Nagio system in the place, now we are just using the CloudWatch itself as a very advanced tool. So all these things, okay, if you could able, nobody can do that as a, as a student. So if you could able to do that, and you can easily crack a job of four years DevOps experience, okay, without any proxy and without any issues. 
Okay. So this is there one of the the one video. doubt in this uh, diagram where you show. Mm-hmm. In this uh, overview, you, you just uh, you know, spoke about this uh, Git server and Git LFS. I think till now we spoke about only GitHub. So is it like just installing the Git application uh, in the? I will kill you. Yes, yes. We kill you. We have talked about it. Not LFS, but but we have talked about. Uh, I have installed the Git on the server and by using uh, SSH mechanism, I have asked. Uh, so even Sundar, I have asked, I have access to this. Uh, from my laptop to the GitHub, you remember? Sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, server thing we have done. Uh, so I am asking about this LFS and you said Git or something else. See, LFS and all, you you don't have to do it. So this is what I have designed for some guy who is uh, uh, 15 to 20 years experienced. Uh, some guys are there, okay, with me. So LFS and all, nobody is going to ask you, okay. So it is a corporate training which I have designed for them, okay. So uh, that you so instead of this LFS, you we will talk about Gitlite, which will be very helpful for you. We will talk about it. Okay. Okay. Sir. So remind me, remind me. Maybe I will forget. So remind me. I will show you. It will be very interesting for you. Uh, tomorrow. I'll... That is what after. No, no, not tomorrow. So it will be demotivation for you because already a lot of guys are demotivated now. So oh. once you practice everything, yes, then sir. I will bombard this Gitlite to you. Because Gitolite setup means I will be talking about uh, HTTPS services and uh, HTTP virtual configuration mm -hmm. and HTTP web server. So that and all will be very difficult for you to understand. So when when I'm talking about uh, Tomcat Apache in the chip more, then you can understand this Gitolite uh, concept well. Okay, sir. Okay, so. Okay, sir. No we'll all practice today well, and then we'll get back to you tomorrow. We just check whether how how far we are able to get your concepts, and then you can uh, okay. proceed further. Yeah, I will change the track also because yeah. this and all I, I I have introduced to this kind of teaching only with this batch. This this uh, this three batches I am teaching now. Okay. Okay. But normally what I used to tell is I used to tell some examples of this uh, uh, master slave concept and left leave them. Mm -hmm. And I will be telling the, um, that is a, what is that upstream and downstream and just move on and the SSH server so SSH server configuration and leave and parameterize build and leave mm -hmm. but uh, everything I will be explained as a bits and pieces of the concept but uh, this is the first time I am trying to explain with the problem statement itself so this is a problem statement and this is the technical way to do that correct yes. So I can easily tell that uh, the master slave concept and it will be working for us. Mm -hmm. But when it com comes to the real time to copy the to copy the small file, you see how many issues we are having. Yeah, yeah, sir. Good, uh, so, good, sir. That you are covering all concepts. It's good. And uh, the problem is with us that because we are able to, we are unable to cope up with the speed that you are going on. That's what my no, point. You are my, no, my no, my concern is you yeah. are thinking that it is speed. But what I am saying is. Think that it is your survival decision, and whatever I am teaching is not a speed to you. Okay, you yes. know, 50 minutes. 50 minutes. The other DevOps. I I have seen lot of DevOps trainers in the market. Mm -hmm. So they are covering uh, in the speed. Uh, okay. We are accepting the incapability of uh, our speed. So no, no. I am saying. I am saying. I I know. Correct, boss. Correct, guys. I, I am not pointing you, or I am not complaining you. But I want you to be in this level because you need to swim because the market is very very tough and difficult proxy don't think about proxy at least you know you need to know something yes then only you can talk yes. with the proxy and all all those things yes sir. one one point yes. Are, one yeah. point yes sir. one point yes we are not saying that mm -hmm. I, we do understand because we have to be at that level of speed but what we are saying is at a concept level we wanted to go slow and then we, we wanted to grasp as much as possible so that we'll have our Fine, base good and then we can build upon that because initially correct. running that would be difficult for us that's what my point is correct 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 i am okay. i am completely agree with you so i know that uh, the people uh, speed and all those things yeah yeah but, uh, but it is very unfortunate that uh, you need to run very fast about your capability beyond your capability uh -huh. Yes, Sundar, yeah. we'll try to... Uh, we'll, we'll cope with that, uh, uh, we'll cope with that, Sundar. Yeah, and what about Chaitan? Chaitan, so Chaitan, are you there? You missed a lot of classes. 
What are you going to do? Yeah, yes, yeah, Sundar. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. What is going on? I'm unable to catch up. That's why I'm not doing anything. That's fine. That's fine. No issue. What you do is you also attend this class. And yeah. morning seven o'clock, seven o'clock also there is a batch. Okay, so for you it is going to be a night time. Okay, so yeah. in that batch just I have started Maven only. Okay, so I will be starting with Jenkins. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So that batch also you try to join and copy them. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, like here six thirty, right? Uh, five thirty, sorry. Right. I don't know, boss. Uh, it is seven yeah. o'clock. Uh, seven seven <laughs> seven o'clock p.m. Yeah. Sorry, a.m. Yeah. a.m. for me. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye bye. See you. And uh, Pranita, are you doing good? Okay, so please practice, Pranita. I am sure that uh, you know you will not understand this, but you have to. No issue, but uh, practice and come back to me. It doubts. Okay, boss. So I don't know what happened. So he is talking to me, but he is not joining the class. Okay, fine. We will see. Bye bye, guys. See you. Bye, Sundar. Bye, Sundar. See you tomorrow on the same time, maybe.